Hi, this will be the first part in a little series about observability. Um, we're going to start out with linear observability here. Um, so what is observability? Observability is a quantification of how feasible or how well posed an estimation task is, so say estimating some state of a dynamical system given some set of measurements from sensors, um, and in nonlinear cases, uh, a specific type of trajectory that your dynamical system is following. So to make that a little bit more concrete and intuitive, um, let's put things into context of a, um, uh, a block diagram. So if you um, imagine um, having, say, um, some desired state that you're trying to control your dynamical system to achieve, um, what you're ultimately going to do is you're going to compare that desired state to, um, or what you want to do is compare it to the actual state x. Um, now, of course, we generally don't have direct access to the actual state. Instead, we have um, measurements that are coming from sensors, so we can represent that as those states going through some sensor block. Um, that could be linear or nonlinear, um, and that's going to give us our measurements, which we will call y. Now, in um, a practical application, we'll take those measurements and we'll try to estimate the state x using some kind of estimator or observer. Um, a common way to do that would be, say, using a column filter. Um, now, that's not going to give us the actual state. It's going to give us some um, estimate, so we'll call that x hat. Um, and what we'll do in our control system is we'll then compare x hat to the desired value of x and use that um, difference, that error, um, to uh, determine some control values based on some controller that we may have designed. Um, we'll call those control values u, um, and those will go into some um, description of the dynamics for our system, ultimately leading to the actual state output. So what the what observability is going to tell us is what this estimator, or uh, it's not going to tell us what that estimator should be, but it will tell us whether or not it's possible to build one, whether or not it's possible for that estimator to work properly. Um, so to make that a little bit more formal, um, what observability is going to tell us is if there's a one-to-one -one mapping between the state, and now specifically we're talking about one instance of that state at t equals zero or at whatever initial time you're interested in, um, is there a one-to-one -one mapping between that and the measurements that you will get from t0 to some time um, w, some time window later, um, in addition to potentially the control inputs uh, for nonlinear systems will um, matter as well. Um, okay, so let's get into it. We're going to start out with um, linear systems before we move on to the nonlinear case. Um, so consider a very simple um, linear time invariant system the standard x dot equals ax plus bu, and we have our measurements y are given by um, cx plus du. Now we might get very lucky, and maybe it's possible to directly determine or estimate the state's given measurements at one moment in time. Um, if that's the case, we can just take that measurement equation, y, and rewrite it. Um, as an equation for x. So x hat is going to be equal to, we'll move the du over so we have y minus du. And then we just need to multiply this by the pseudo inverse of c. Um, if that pseudo inverse exists, which is only true if c is full rank, then it's in principle possible to get an estimate of the state just given those measurements. Now what happens when that's not possible? Now recall that observability is asking whether or not it's possible to estimate state given measurements from some time window. So we have multiple measurements. So what we could do is we could take the derivative of those measurements and that will give us some additional information. Um, so if we write down the time derivative of y, again we're assuming this is a linear time invariant system so c and d do not vary in time. So we just have c x dot plus d u dot. Of course we don't know x dot, um, but we can plug in ax plus bu for that. So we'll get here c times ax plus bu plus du dot. Now let's expand that out just so it's very clear. So we have cax plus cb 
u plus d u dot. Now we can add that to the measurements from above, essentially combining the measurements, the direct measurements we have and the derivative of those measurements. Um, and if we put that all together, what we'll essentially have is y and y dot are equal to c and c a times x plus on the top we'll have d u and on the bottom for the second row we'll have c b u plus d u dot. So now we can rearrange this equation just like we did before, um, but now instead of needing c to be full rank, we need this um, c and c a together to be full rank, and we'll take the pseudo inverse of that. If that exists, then our system is observable. But if it only exists, if it's only full rank, if you include the c a term, then that means that you will have to take a derivative of the measurements somehow. Maybe that's taken care of by your estimator, um, but it does mean that it is, in some sense, a little bit more difficult to estimate the state. Um, so this um, here is the observability matrix. Um, so uh, you can add as many uh, derivatives as you need um, to complete that. Um, so the observability matrix is going to be C, C A. Maybe you need to take a second derivative, so C A squared. And you can do this um, with as many derivatives as you need. And if that here, which we call O, the observability matrix, if that's full rank, then your system's observable. Um, so just to recap, right, this first row here, um, or the first several rows, depending on how large C is, um, those are going to be your measurements. The second set of rows here is going to be the derivative of those measurements. The third set is the second derivative, and so on. Um, so that observability matrix, um, it has a shape where um, the columns here are correspond to all the states in your system, and the rows here correspond to all of the measurements and their derivatives. Once you have O, you could of course just determine whether or not it's full rank and then you know if it's observable, uh, but there's a lot more that you could do with O, uh, which we will talk about in subsequent lectures.